everyone welcome back to the channel so i'm going to be prepping my next color on page in johanna basford small victories i've still not finished the camper van page yet but i really wanted to prep this page so where is it here it is so we've been doing the camper van page we're still continuing with that one but what i want to do is prep this so i thought i would rather than do it off camera and you not know how I've gone about it I thought I would do it on camera so first off I'm going to create a kind of a little border around this butterfly I think so I have got this low tack tape it's served me well in my colouring books if I can find the link for it I will drop it in the description um but I'm gonna kind of create a border around here so I'm just kind of thinking do I want it to be sort of cut off like that or do i want it to be right around the edges same because you've got to think how much space you've got on those sides i mean this tape's only long enough for that side let me do the longest side first and then we can see where we want to be so this tape is you can kind of see through i mean if you get that line you can see how much space i've left around the edge there so i've gone right up to the wing on the butterfly on that side so kind of going to do the same on this side i think this side is going to be smaller I might have to go back and change the other side so it's not odd. I'm going to have to take that out, it's getting in the way. I'm not the best at getting things straight. Is anyone else a bit chaotic? Yeah, so I think this side I'm going to be very, very gentle. It will come off quite easier. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Hopefully. That needs to be a bit more in. Right, let's see what that's like. Yes, yeah, so that's a bit more same on both sides now. I'm going to do the top and bottom there we go so I got a new distress ink colour a couple of days ago what I really want to test out and that's why I'm coming on to do this today so let me try and get the camera up there a little bit better we are definitely on screen there aren't we only just so the new colour I got is this one, saltwater taffy. I saw somebody doing a page with this and it looked gorgeous. There is an emergency vehicle going past. Quite a funny sounding one. Look at that. Ambulance. It's a funny sounding siren. Yeah, so I saw somebody using this and I thought, how beautiful is that colour? And I thought it'd go really well on the background of this, this page. So I'm going to do a distressing background here. Now I'm not worried about this going over some of the illustration because this is as you know it's all florals it's all it's probably going to have some pinks in it or something that will cover up this color if it does happen to go over some of the edges so i'm not worried about it going over the edge so bear that in mind some look at the hat <laughs> it's not as dark as that but i have got some little note paper here which i will use to sort of because I'm going to rub it into the Distress Ink and then I'm going to sort of just tap it on there so we've not got loads of ink on the um, brush. It doesn't seem... Some of them you can get and they're really, really juicy. Like really, really. And then some are just regular and then some can come dried up and you have to send them back. All just depends. So I like to start in the corners and I like to start in the corners for two reasons. One, that you're going to have the most ink on your sort of blending brush at the start so it's good to have the most colour 
in the corners and then you can blend slowly blend into the center i prefer to do that so should we start in this top corner but like i say it's not overly juicy this so i can sort of go straight from the pad onto the paper and as long as i'm in the corner when i do that it'll be okay it's it's a lovely delicate sort of peachy pink tone I don't know what what would you call what color would you call it it's called saltwater taffy <laughs> but what color would you call it a pink would you call it a peach if you had to decide what color was that see when we get to this edge this is where we risk going over like I said but it's not an issue for me I am not fussed one little bit about that this flower, uh, flower this butterfly is going to be lovely shades of pinks and greens i think i've decided i'm gonna do it maybe throw a couple of extra colors in there but mainly it's gonna be those so i've always just used these brushes that i've got as blenders um i know people use the actual um is it the ranger ones you can get um, you can actually get the ones that come specifically for the distress inks, but I've never used them personally. So I'm going around all the edges first and then I'm slowly bringing it more and more into the centre, building up. So it is going to be darker around the edges and paler in the sort of middle. And really, you don't want to be too worried about getting it on the illustration because what you don't want... Well, sometimes it can look nice. I think it depends. But sometimes you can get what's called a halo around your illustration where you've tried to avoid going over too much and then you get this white line that surrounds your illustration. Now, sometimes that can look nice. Depends what effect you're going for. But sometimes I don't want that to happen. So if we just go for a nice sort of blended darker to lighter in the middle not worry about going over the illustration because we know that we're going to be colouring it pinks and greens and that that will cover it up anyway so that's the top bit sorted kind of if I want to come in with any more at the end I can always come back in I'm going to work my way down now down the sides and at the bottom so I'll come from the side this tape is good to have on because it protects this side as well just be careful you're not sometimes I've come all the way over by accident thinking oh I'm safe and then I'm like oh no you've been far too clumsy there Kirsty far too clumsy let's get that into that little gap there back in and we'll start in this corner I think when I pop the link in for you for this low tack tape I think I'll get myself another roll I can tell there's not much left on it not much left on my roll and I use it for all my paintings as well you see use it in my cloning books and I use it for my paintings it's really nice tape So that colour now here. It does take time to build up on this these distress inks and like I say it just won't just depends how juicy your distress ink is. I'd say this is a regular it's not very juicy it's not overly juicy and it's not very very dry it's like a i'd say it's just normal this distress ink you do have to work it in 
the lighter colours you have to work more at as well. Getting the colour down. Now sometimes you will get a spot like this. Now that is sometimes where if you've put your hand down on the page or any sort of grease or oil off anything of your hands or anything else has got onto the page then that might happen but i'm going to splash water on this page at the end anyway so that won't be too obvious because there will be lots of splashing of water going on on this page and that will create this kind of effect anyway so it's just popped that in there for me anyway but yeah just make sure that you don't accidentally rest your hand on the page because your oil off your hand will lift the distress ink up. I made that mistake lots of times. I can tell you because I've done it so many times. I've probably run out of fingers to count how many times I've done that. Let's get a bit more colour in there. I really like how putting on a border can make an all illustration. It just makes it look so pretty. So this butterfly, when I actually come around to colouring it, I probably will have like um, starting at dark pink on the edges and then working my way a bit lighter and a bit lighter and then all these sort of leaves are going to be green, which will go over that anyway as well. a bit more colour in the bit down here. Pop a bit more colour at the top and then I'm going to splash my water all over it. I'm going to get a nice effect going on. So there we go. Let me pop the lid back on the distress ink. So I'm just going to get a clean paintbrush and I'm going to dip it into my water. I've got a jug of water and I'm literally going to tap splats of water onto the page. it back in. I'll try and put a big one around there and then it looks like we're joining in with that big white spot. <laughs> you can do as little or as much as you want with this. Totally up to you. So we pop the water down, our little sprinkles. We'll leave it for a few minutes to lift that pigment up because that's what it's doing it's just lifting the colour that you've put down wherever it's splatting on it's lifting that pigment so we just let it do its thing you can see where it's lifting let it do its thing for a few minutes and then what you want is a clean cloth it's important to get a clean cloth because I've made this mistake also so this is a clean microfiber cloth. What I've done in the past is picked up a cloth what I've been using for painting and there might have been a bit of paint on the cloth and then I've used it on my page and then I've transferred dirt or paint from my cloth onto my page. I've made all these mistakes so I'm telling you because I don't want you to ruin your book. I don't want you to do what I've done. So absolutely nice clean cloth and then you can start dabbing and once this is dry it looks nicer as well once it's dry you will see the effect better because at the moment when you initially do it you might see the dark line around the edge that doesn't stay there that disappears once your page is all dry that disappears and all you're left with is an, a really lovely effect but just whilst it's drying we have that dark edge and it 
can look a bit mudded but it's not going to dry like that it's going to be beautiful so you know <laughs> So once you're happy with that, you could allow it to dry fully, not just a bit. You could allow it to fully dry. You could go back in with different colours of Distress Ink and do the effect again. You, that is an option you can do, but you have to allow all the layers to dry. Um, I'm hoping it's not gone through to the other side, but time will tell when we take this off. Because sometimes if you use too much water it can sort of go through to the next page so you do have to be careful if you're using water with distressing hopefully that hasn't happened fingers crossed it has happened sort of say i've done this effect a hundred times or 200 times it's probably only happened once and that was actually with a distress oxide that that happened with so yeah, I'm going to remove this tape now. Even though it's a low-tech tape, I'm still going to be very careful with it because it can still, we can still have whoopsy moments with this tape if we're not careful. Because I think any tape really, even if it's low-tech, because it's not supposed to be put on colouring books, is it really? But I love this nice crisp edge. It's what I'm looking for. When I'm peeling the tape, I'm like, oh, please don't have seeped underneath. Give me a nice clean edge, that's what we want. It has seeped a little bit there, but you can't really see much. So very carefully. And then our last side. Have to be extra careful here because it's actually over the top of some of my illustrations. There we go, we made it, we made it. The tape made the cut, now we have to see if we've um, gone onto the other side or not. Let's remove the paper. And hope for the best, are we ready? Oh my gosh, it has as well. <laughs> it has as well. Oh, well, the, the lucky thing is on this, is that it's not on the actual illustration really. And this has got to dry as well still remember it's wet on the other side so we can go over that we can do an acrylic background which will be a good one to do this could be a nighttime scene so we could go for a kind of dark blue acrylic gouache background maybe or a deep purple might be nice because it's a mushroom house isn't it a deep purple acrylic paint might be nice but yeah this is definitely going to have a border around it, probably in the same place because we can see where it stops here at the border. So we'll probably make another border around this page and then it will be covered over with acrylic paint. So you won't see it. So I've kind of, it was a boo-boo, but it's rescuable. Yeah, but just be mindful. Yeah, at least I've made that test for you now. I've done that test for you that maybe this paper isn't the best to do that distress ink effect. It's fine if you're just going in with the Distress Ink, putting the Distress Ink on. It's the fact that the water's gone on and then it's seeped through. So if you're not doing the water effect, it'll be absolutely fine just to do the Distress Ink in this book. But yeah, I don't think I would um, attempt the water effect in here again because I didn't really put that much water on, to be honest. Um, yeah, don't do it, guys, don't do it. But like I said, totally rescuable. Acrylic paint background that one's going to be with a nice little border which comes up to here. <laughs> so the rest, I'm thinking deep purple for that one, maybe. But yeah, it's pretty. It's still not, it's still wet so we've still got these dark lines but when it's done it'll be lovely and that's going to be pinks and greens on that one. But I thought I'd show you because we are going to do this one as a colour along after this page. So I want you to know why I did the background. But obviously if you're not happy with this possibility happening, then don't add the water. Just do a distress ink or a chalk pastel background, something like that. Okay, so please hit that big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Comment down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye bye.